Oh, I know that sound. It's time for the beer and news report. Fine, we'll do the beer news report. Cheers. Today, I'm drinking premium beer. It's a lager from Primitor Brewery. You may have remembered I drank another beer from this brewery called Maybach. I like this one better than Maybach, but it's still a little too malty for me. But if I'm at a party, nothing else to drink, I'm fine drinking it. Cheers. This is the fourth show from the rankings of the highlight show. It's called Ocean Farming. This is a relatively new technology, and for the U.S., it's stronger on the East Coast than it is on the West Coast. Now, this show will start by showing that as the population grows, we are running out of space for farming, especially if you're a meat eater. So first off, we're going to show you the population growth around the world, then the area needed for each type of meat, and then followed by the conditions that the animals are in with industrial farming. Now, that sets us up for the introduction of ocean farming. And then so, with ocean farming, I'm going to explain what it is, and I'm not talking about ocean fisheries. Then what can be grown in these ocean farms? Finally, what are the effects of these farms? And what products can be made from ocean farming? Sounds pretty good, right? Let's start the show. Cheers. The population of the world is growing at an astounding rate. Look at this chart from the website Our World and Data. It shows exponential growth, which has happened in the last two to three hundred years. What you need to notice is this red line. That's the world growth rate. The good news is that it's coming down. Notice that by 2100, the chart predicts that the population of the world will be at 11 billion. Now, is that good or bad? Well, the UN predicts that the world population will be closer to 14 billion by that date. And remember, these are all predictions. No one knows for sure what the population will be in 2100. Who knows? Maybe another pandemic breaks out that's worse than this COVID one or something really crazy like global nuclear war. There are a number of things that could change these predictions. The least likely is that we'll stop having sex. So what happens with all these people? We start to get mega cities. Well, what's a mega city? It's a city with 10 million or more people in it. As of 2018, the United Nations has identified 33 megacities. Okay, so we have more people, we're eating up more space to live in, but how does that affect farming? Well, let's take a look. Cheers. It turns out that the average GDP of the world is increasing, and on average, the personal income of people is going up. Now remember, this is an average, which means the rich are getting richer, and, uh, the poor aren't getting as rich as the rich. The effect of this is that people now have more money and with that they want better things. They want a house, they want a car, they want a TV, they want a refrigerator. And what do you put in that refrigerator? Well, the diet of the world is increasingly turning to meat. Meat is considered a luxury. So when people start getting better incomes, they want better food. So what's so bad about that? The problem is that meat takes a lot more land to grow than does plants. Look at this chart. First, it says that the Earth has 29% of land on it. That's a little misleading because the ocean bar should be way bigger, but they wanted to focus on land, so they just pushed the rest of the ocean bar off the chart. The second line says that 29% of the land, of that, 71% of it is habitable. The rest is glaciers or mountains or deserts. The third line says that of that habitable land, 50% of it is for agriculture. The rest of it is forests and cities and fresh water. Now, the fourth line says that of that agricultural land, 77% of it is used for growing meat. The fifth line says that 18% of us eat meat. And the sixth line is just basically saying where we get our protein. So let's focus on that fifth line and assume that that 18% is increasing because people are getting richer. Looking at this chart, we can see that the world consumption of meat is, in fact, increasing. This graph really doesn't show it, so look at this graph and what meat product is dramatically increasing. That's right, chicken. All right, chickens. Way to go for number one. Cheers. Now, this chart is showing the land needed to grow some crops as compared to animals. Not that it makes much difference, but I'm referencing the green bars when I'm talking about land usage. It's interesting to note that chickens take more land to raise than pork. I believe that's because pigs have a higher body to meat ratio than chickens, right? With all those feathers and beaks and claws. But the good news is that chickens use way less land than beef. One last chart 
Chickens also take way less water than beef or pork, which isn't too big of a concern for the U.S., but it is for some other countries. And one thing, the U.S. is really good at seeing a problem and then finding a solution to it. Seeing that land was going to be an issue and wanted to maximize profits, the U.S. has industrialized its agricultural industry, which is great if you're a plant farmer. The equipment we have nowadays makes our farmers the most productive in the world. Even planes are used. When harvest season comes, you grab your kids or a neighbor or two, then get to work. For really big farms, you might need a whole team to get the harvest done. The same thing happened with animals. But is it really better? We pack chickens in tight cages, cut off their beaks so they can't peck at each other. Pigs are packed in cages with cement floors for easy cleaning. Pretty much the same with beef, especially the dairy cows. Now, I don't have time to go into whether this is healthy for the animals or not. I don't see how it could be, but that's a whole different show. For now, we need to move on to ocean farming. Now that you understand what's happening with land farming. Cheers. Most people think of ocean farming, they think of fish. Big tanks that hold fish until they get big enough to harvest. But that's not what I'm talking about. Yes, fisheries are part of ocean farming, but it falls into the same category as land animals packed in cages. When I'm talking about ocean farming, I'm talking about seaweed, otherwise known as kelp. That's what started it. But as this industry got bigger and bigger, it started to diversify. Now, instead of just kelp, farmers are growing shellfish. That would include mussels, scallops, oysters, but what is this all doing to the ocean? When you think of kelp, you should think of that as the forest of the ocean. Just like our trees on land, they pull the carbon out of the air. Well, kelp pulls the carbon out of the water. So it's actually making the ocean better. You know, the same thing goes for shellfish. They need carbon to build their shells. Their bivalves suck in water, they filter it, and then expel cleaner water. Now you may be thinking, well, what about abalone? Yes, that could be raised, but basically it would eat your crops. Abalone is a sea snail that eats kelp. It's very tasty and it goes great with beer, but you have to weigh the cost of growing kelp and the cost of raising abalone and see if there's enough profit, although abalone is expensive, so I think there is. A side note, if you're concerned about climate change or global warming, the oceans are like a big sponge and it sucks the carbon out of the air. But when it pulls the carbon in, it makes itself more acidic. And you can see that from the destruction of the coral reefs. But if ocean farming is taking carbon out of the ocean, then it's helping to turn back climate change or global warming. We need to really grow this industry as fast as possible, not only to clean our oceans, but to help with climate change. Here's to the ocean farmers. Cheers. There are other benefits to ocean farming. Just like land farming, people are needed to grow the food and harvest it. Well, that's more jobs. And then new machines need to be built, just like the modernization of land farming. So that's more businesses. And finally, we need to have more food products so that we can use up all that kelp that we're producing. So that's more services. So first off, you need a boat to do ocean farming if you're going to do it on an industrial scale. To check the plants and the shellfish, you're going to need scuba divers and lots of them. Now, as you get big and technology improves, they're going to develop submersible drones that someday could patrol the farm and alert you of areas that need attention. I mean, you'll still need scuba divers to go down and fix that area. But this is more like a firefighter than an actual patrol going back and forth over your whole crops. Now, when harvest season comes, you pull up the crops into the boat and you deliver them to the port for processing. So new factories need to be built to process all this new food. Also, packaging factories for the shipment of the food and research facilities to discover new uses for the crop. Potentially, millions of jobs could be made if we can get these farms big enough and have plenty of them. Now, how big could we actually get these? What are the limits on countries to how much ocean they can use? Well, there are limits. It's called EEZ, and that stands for Exclusive Economic Zones. In 1982, the United Nations set up a law that these areas for each country bordering an ocean has exclusive rights to do whatever they want, and it goes out from their shoreline 200 miles. Now, here's a map showing those zones. It's that blue line. Now, some countries are closer than 200 miles, and in those cases, the ocean zone is divided equally between the two or more countries. For the most part, the U.S. doesn't have this problem. Both the eastern and western coasts could have gigantic farms off their coast. Just think of the property taxes the state like California or Florida could get. Adding 200 miles of coastline for farming, it would be a bonanza. I can see the politicians drooling right now. Cheers. 
finally we come to the food products part. What are we going to do with all this kelp? I think the shellfish will become more common as a food item as the production goes up, but the cost goes down, right? Then everyone's going to want to eat it. But kelp isn't that common of a food item. Sure, we eat sushi, and that's wrapped in seaweed, and maybe a kelp salad. But really, how much kelp can we eat? That's where new companies come in and develop kelp-based products that we'll eat, like kelp-based meat. A green burger, anyone? No, actually, the meat is going to be red, just like it came from an animal. There are a number of companies around the world doing this, like the Dutch Weed Burger Company, or a small startup in the San Francisco Bay Area called Trophic. Other companies are making chips out of kelp, as in Ocean Halo in San Francisco, or just packaging kelp ready to eat, like the Cornish Seaweed Company out of the UK. But the best company has got to be the Marshall Wharf Brewing Company out of Maine. They make beer with kelp in it. <laughs> I haven't tried it, but if I'm ever out in Maine, I'm going to swing by. Cheers. Now, some of you may be thinking, hey, aren't they trying to make gasoline from seaweed? Yes, they are. And I'm glad to see you're doing your own research. But these companies are using microalgae, which is seaweed, but it's all done in the factory. It's not really ocean farming or using the crops from ocean farming. So I don't really consider it. Ocean farming. Maybe if they get bigger and they diversify and they can do it out in the ocean to get the seaweed, then yes, that would be another product from ocean farming. But right now, it's an old, it's it's its own separate category. Well, as you can see, my beer is almost empty, so that means we're at the end of the show. You can contact me at this email address. I hope you had a good time watching, and please click the like button if you did. Of course, if you want to get notified when they do a new show, click that subscribe button and then click the bell icon next to it. This will notify you when a new show has been posted. Until then, keep your beer cold and your interest hot. Cheers.